Now, what if I told you you have filters on steroid? So right here, you have your chromatic effect. Let's click on it. And there you have your chromatic effect and you can modify each and every aspect of it. Intensity of each color, just like this, the overall intensity, and of course, decrease the opacity for enhanced effect. And it's not just that. You have different filters like half tone, and then you can control the size of the dots, and then you can go back to this. There is a duo tone, and you can control the colors of the duo tone. So many darn filters, and it's all non destructive. Now, how do we get these filters? Let's have some patience. In this video, we're going to talk about what's new in the shocking release of Photoshop 2024, including the beta. Let's do some housekeeping. To update your Photoshop, go to your Creative Cloud desktop app. If you're using a Jack Sparrow version, you know where to go. I don't have to tell you. Go to apps and inside of that, all apps, and then you can scroll down to Photoshop and make sure it is up to date. For me, I'm using Photoshop version 25, which is the latest, and it says it is up to date. If it's not, click on install next to it or update next to it. And to get the beta, scroll down, go to beta apps right here and make sure you have installed Photoshop beta. First of all, you have your brand new parametric filters, a step away from the old filter gallery. Keep in mind, it is only available in Photoshop beta. So you need to open your Photoshop beta app, which is different from the regular Photoshop. Once you do, go to filter and then parametric filters. That's all. You don't have to worry about converting your layer into a smart object. Just click on any one of these filters like chromatic one right here and it applies it just like that. It converts the layer into a smart object and then you have your parametric properties which can modify the filter. You can increase the intensity of red, green or blue, whatever you like. You can decrease the overall opacity to give a very nice effect right here. Let's increase it back in and you can change the filter to whatever you like. So let's say I want oil paint. Now if there's an effect you don't like it in a certain way, you can modify it or randomize it. So in this case, the stroke size is too high on the X axis. So let's decrease it. And there you go. It gets so darn much better, right? Now, on top of that, you can randomize the entire effect by clicking on randomize right here. Click on randomize again and stop at what you like. Let's say this is something you like. You can apply differently in this area. You can also choose the quality of the render. So right now it is set to medium. We can choose draft resolution just to play around. And then you can also choose ultra resolution for the final render. You also get the option to stack different filters. For example, right now, whatever filter I choose, it changes to that, right? So let's go ahead and choose filter glitch. Of course, we don't want that much glitch, just a little bit of it. And on top of that, I want to include half tone. Stack on over it for it. Hold the Alt key or the Option key and then click on half tone. There you go. It stacks over it and the glitch is included in that half tone effect. The remove tool now gets upgraded and this is available in the regular version of Photoshop. First of all, let's create a new layer before applying the remove tool and you want to make sure you check, select the remove tool, check sample all layers so that it is non-destructive. Now let's say you wanted to remove this distraction. Earlier, you would have to just paint over it slowly and gradually paint over the entire thing. This would be so hard, right? Now you don't have to do any of that. Just make a circle around it, loop around it. That's all. So let me carefully do it just like this, loop around it. And there you go. Everything inside of that circle just goes away. Similarly, right here as well, just loop around this thing. There you go. The entire thing is gone. How convenient is that? Another addition is the addition of addition and subtraction brushes. So right here, as you can see, you have plus and minus brushes now. For example, let's first of all uncheck remove after each stroke so that we can properly apply these. And let's try to remove this entire thing. All right, I'm going to make a loop around it. All of it is now just painted over. Now part of her shoe is also selected. So we need to subtract that. So how do we do it? Select the minus one and subtract it. Or even if the plus is selected, hold the Alt key or the Option key. Momentarily, this will be minus and then you can subtract this particular area. There you go. Once you're ready, click on the check right here and it's gone incredibly well. And just in a matter of few seconds, all of these distractions are gone. Before moving to the biggest new features, thanks to our rhythm partner, Epidemic Sound, for sponsoring this video. Let's say you like this music track and you like this section of it. Select it and Epidemic Sound magically gives you similar sections from different tracks. There are places we can get music, but finding the right track, the perfect track, is where Epidemic Sound really shines. You can even just drag and drop your video and the sound match feature automatically suggests music based on your video clip. With so many high quality music, tracks and even more sound effects, you never have to worry about copyright strikes or takedowns. Besides, everything is unlimited. You can download and use as much as you want. And the best part is you can download different stems of the same track. Check the link and discount code in the description to get a 30 day free trial to Epidemic Sound and an amazing 25% off for the entire 
year. Any video where you use the music during the trial will remain safe and protected, even if you cancel your subscription. So why not try it? Back to Photoshop and here's the big news. Adobe's generative AI features like Generative Fill and Generative Expand are now out of beta. You can use it commercially, but does that mean that you have a limitation to it? We'll discuss it later in the video. Let's talk what's new. Now when you open Photoshop, you have a guided tutorial for Generative Fill. Let's play it. If you follow along, she will take you through the entire process and give you the basics of Generative Fill. By the way, huge shout out to Anna McNaught, the person in this video. And yes, I'm flexing by telling you that I do know this amazing artist. She's incredible. Do follow her work on Instagram. Since Generative Fill is out of beta, you can now use it in the regular version of Photoshop. So all you have to do is to update your Photoshop version 25 to be precise. And in this example, I made a selection of this tourist right here, which I want to remove. And then you can click on generate a fill in the contextual taskbar. If you don't see the contextual taskbar, go to window and make sure down at the bottom, contextual taskbar is turned on. Click on generate a fill, click on generate again. And something new you will see here is that you get to see tips right here. Every time you generate something, you'll get to see some tips regarding generative AI. It does give you three options as usual. First, second, third. Choose what you like. And if you want three more options, click on generate again. Generative fill is also great at adding things. Let's make a selection. Click on generative fill. And this time let's type in hair and click on generate. And there you go. All of them give fantastic results. I think I'm gonna go with this one. You can turn photos to paintings, remove distractions, change skies, remove tourists, and dozen other applications and even more. If you want to learn more about it, you can watch this video right here. Let's talk about Generative Expand, brand new in Photoshop regular. It works with the crop tool. So if you select the crop tool by clicking right here or pressing C for the crop tool, Generative Expand will show up right here. Now Generative Expand is the same as Generative Fill, wrapped differently. So all it does, let's say you have to post this on Instagram stories for it. We do nine by 16 crop. So let's choose 16 by nine. Let's just reverse it like this. It will have a lot of crop, right? And if we expand it like this, it will have white bars or black bars at the bottom and the top. So after you have made the extension with the crop tool, there are two ways you can apply generative expand. You can either click right here or at the top, you can set the fill, which is transparent by default, to generative expand. And now you can type in whatever you like right here or let it be and hit enter or return or click on generate anything you like. And by the way, if you're wondering, no, the resolution has not increased. So this looks fantastic. Any of the three choices would work great for Instagram. But if you want to post it professionally, may not be as good of a resolution unless you have it blurred due to shallow depth of field. So if you zoom in, this is the original resolution right here. And as soon as we move right here, this is generative fill. But then again, it's not much big of a problem because it's a shallow depth of field. Even here at the top, you cannot even tell. But again, if you want higher resolution, you can generate a little by little. For example, just generate this area with generate a fill and then the next area and then the next area, so on and so forth. Now coming to the big question about whether generate a fill, generative expand and other generative AI features inside of the Adobe space, whether they will be limited or not. So Adobe is introducing something called generative credits. Yes. So whatever you use inside of the generative AI space, in Adobe will cost you these credits. Let's say you use Generative Fill one time, it will cost you some credit. Let's say you used Generative Recolor in Adobe Illustrator one time, it will cost you credits. But don't worry, you will get a set number of credits based on the plan you're on. Let me show you. It's all in the Adobe website. I'll link it up in the description. So let's say you are on Creative Cloud All Apps plan. You get a thousand credits. If you own just Photoshop or Premiere Pro After Effects single app plan, you'll get 500 credits for different plans. You have different number of credits as well across different products too. Now what happens after these credits are over? As for Photoshop's generative fill, it just gets slower. That's all. So you really can use features like Generative Fill and Generative Expand Unlimited. It just will get slower after your set number of credits are over. Yes, you can purchase additional credits. Adobe will give that option in the future. And if you want to learn about how all of this is going to work out or whether you have to pay or not, where you have to pay, where you don't have to pay, just watch this video everything will be clear. Anytime you use AI in your project, it will be tagged as such, even if you export it as a JPEG or a PNG. So let's say we go to File, Export, Export As. If we scroll down right here, take a look. Content credential will be applied to this image because it was made with Generative AI. So if you try to preview it, it will tell you Adobe Firefly AI model was used, even if you save it as a JPEG or PNG. So let me save and reopen the image. So this is the original document with the person removed, and this is the JPEG which we exported. Everything is merged down still. If you go to window, 
content credentials. And inside of that, let's enable it. Let's preview it. You can see that AI model Adobe Firefly was used, but it's not absolutely foolproof. And I've shown it in this video right here. This one is a simple fix. Earlier, when you made a selection, see the contextual taskbar is jumping from here and there. Of course, you could pin it by clicking on the three dots and choose pin bar position and pin it right here. But then again, if you restarted Photoshop, I've just restarted and let's open this image again. And if I do anything, it's back to that behavior. So this was Photoshop 2023. But right now I have just opened Photoshop 2024. And from the previous session, I had set it to pin bar position. So if I make a selection, see, it does not jump. So when you restart Photoshop, it does not jump anymore. It stays at pin bar position. Simple fix, very useful. So that's all there is for Photoshop 2024 and beta. And this, my friend, was a shock of a launch because Adobe usually launches new generations of Photoshop around Adobe Max, their biggest creative event. But this came out of the blue. Speaking of Adobe Max, I'm thrilled to be doing a session at Adobe Max. And the best part is you can join in from the comfort of your home. You can join in live to the session absolutely for free. We're going to talk about how to make sense of this barrage of AI tools raining like cats and dogs and use it to your advantage to grow your business. I hope you find it useful. Check the link in description to join the session. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks, or tutorials. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. We're up here on cloud nine.